What's going on, elect of the Lord? Glad y'all could join a brother. Brand new day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you brought your spiritual appetite. Let's fasten them seat belts. If you're fasting, you're doing a great thing. You know, fasting and prayer, man. Uh, that's the answer to it all. It's first in the spirit realm. That's what we justified in spirit and in truth. Just believe every word of God. Uh, fasting breaks down the flesh. It also brings healing. Healing comes through the spirit. Attack in the spirit realm, y'all. Uh, even if the doctors have diagnosed you, you can feel there's something wrong in your physical frame. Attack it through the spirit. Fasting and prayer, trusting in the Lord, uh, don't doubt, don't fear, uh, continue to witness, be a soul winner, uh, you know, do a combination of things, uh, righteously, in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, your relationships matter, uh, how you dealing with people in the name of the Lord, you know, uh, you got to be transparent. Can't be no hypocrite. Got to get rid of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, abandon the flesh life. You know? Don't put all your... Don't put your... Don't put any eggs as far as in the flesh life. Put them in the basket of the... Uh, your new birth. Spiritual life. All your eggs should be in the basket of Jesus Christ. That means all your trust. All your hope. Uh, not in the flesh. I don't care if you got, they saying you got tumors the size of a watermelon. Uh, faith kills the tumors. It's faith that kills sickness, diseases. We see that in Psalms uh, 103. So we, uh, I guess we might as well start there. Let's go to Psalms 103 real quick. I uh, hope y'all having a blessed day. Uh, it's what you make it. Your faith make you whole. Book of Acts, Paul, when had to deal with the uh, king, uh, Augustus. Paul said, I think myself happy, O king. I think myself happy. Hey, man, you control this. You control how your life going to be. If your life going to be hell, that's because of uh, where your faith is. Or your lack of faith. Or your unbelief. And your life can be blessed. You, uh, to him that believes all things are possible. Right? All things are possible to him that believes. Your life can be heavenly. It can be divine. Or yeah, it can be hell. It can be disastrous. It's according to your faith or lack of faith. Psalms 103 verse 1 says, uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Look at this, y'all. He's talking to himself. This is just talking to ourselves. In the spirit. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And we see that name is Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Also, Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. Y'all see this? It's benefits that come with salvation. It's benefits when you call on the name of Jesus Christ. It's benefits when you fast and pray. It's benefits when you abandon the flesh, abandon self for the kingdom of God. Right? Let's read that again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. It's the mind of Christ, y'all. Right? It's being... Um, Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Huh? You got to start being kind. You got to start being nice. Huh? You got to start being meek and humble and lowly. You got to start being as your Lord. Put on Him. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 13, 14. You know? Kill the bad attitude. When you see it rise, when you see it manifest, Use the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Crucified. The scripture says in Romans 6, we are crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20, likewise, we crucified with Christ. 
You say your temper is there, but the Bible says you are crucified with Christ. You say your anger is there, the Bible says you are crucified with Christ. Who report you going to believe? You going to re believe the report of your flesh? You going to believe what you see with your eyes? The Bible says faith. Right? The just shall live by faith. Walk by faith. Not by sight. Not by sight. Yeah, okay. Uh, you got a lot of bad habits. But the Bible says you are crucified with Christ. That Romans chapter 6. You got to meditate on that. It ain't going to hurt you to fast a little bit. If you can fast for two hours, three hours, do that. Fast and pray. Lord, show me I'm crucified. Lord, open my eyes. I'm blind to this truth. Open my eyes. I want to see Jesus so I can follow you. Lord, give me a clean heart. Lord, purge me. Get these demons out of me. Lord, kill this bad attitude in me. <laughs> Let me see your divine life, your resurrection and life, Lord, which is my inheritance, my prosperity. You understand? Kill what you are uh, in the flesh with Jesus' words. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Put them on you. Prophesy over you. I have the mind of Christ. I had a life of Christ. I will walk upright in Christ. Right? I will deny myself. Take up my cross. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ all the days of my life. I, will have, I have the blessing of Abraham. My life is full of blessing and prosperity. Henceforth and forevermore. I will praise the Lord yet more and more. Give glory to his name. I have righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Keep it going daily, y'all. You understand? This is never ending, man. So it's what you make it. It's what you make it. You can move mountains, remember, with your faith. You can move mountains. Command those things to be uprooted and cast into the sea. Those things that are hindering you. Those obstacles. You know? You lie all the time. or You know, those strongholds in your life. Bind those things and cast them into the sea. That's your baptism. That's where they should be drowned. All those demons. The flesh. You know? It's in the sea of forgetfulness, man. The sea of forgetfulness. Forgetfulness. Because when you repent and confess these things, guess what? The Lord don't remember them no more. That's the devil tricking you into remembering these things. I didn't know I was going to deal with this today, but that's, this is for somebody. This is for somebody. Where we at? Psalms 103, verse 3. Psalm 103. Look, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Look, y'all. And healeth all thy disease. That says it all right there. But you say it's still there in my flesh. I just went to the doctor today. And they diagnosed me as saying this and that and this and that. That's the flesh. That's the earthly. That's the world. That's the corruption. Remember, you we not to live by sight, but by faith. Right? The doctors are giving you the sight world. They giving you the accursed world. All of us got something in the flesh. All of us are sick in the flesh, whether it's made manifest or it's lying dormant or it's hidden to us. All of us are jacked up in the flesh. But we're supposed to live by the Spirit, right? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. See, look, look at verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. See that? In the flesh, yeah, we got cancer. Yeah, we got this and that in the flesh, high blood bread. We got all kind of infirmities in our flesh. But when you come to Jesus and call on his name and get baptized in his name, look what it said. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. God's love, man. That's what you got to embrace right there. You have to embrace that right there. He crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercy and made you sons and daughters in the kingdom of God where there's no sickness, no infirmities, no diseases. None of that is there. Whose report will you believe? Let's finish this. 
who satisfy that mouth with good things, that's the scriptures. Yeah, you gotta prophesy. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. But you gotta do it because you gotta put it on. You gotta start prophesying. You gotta start speaking out of your spirit. Right? His goodness and his mercy will follow you. Verse 6 For the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. We were oppressed by the flesh, the world, our enemies, our adversaries, the devil. Uh, and uh, corrupt people, family members, all that. We was oppressed by all of that, the darkness. But now we call on the name of Jesus Christ. Do you call on Jesus Christ, or are you still desperate? Let's go to let's go to that. Here's my subject matter. I wanted to get into Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah six. Jeremiah six, verse eight. Let's do it. It says. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem. Right? That's the chosen people. That's us. That's your homeland, whether you know it or not. You know, heaven is the Jerusalem. In the New Testament, it's called New Jerusalem. Because we had a life of Christ. We have a new life in Christ. So we knew Jerusalem. Any man in Christ, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem. Least my soul depart. Look, my soul, y'all highlight that. My soul depart from thee. Right? This is what our ancestors lost. The soul of the Lord. Right? My soul depart from thee. Least I make thee desolate. See that? And this definitely came to pass when uh, uh, when Jesus Christ came on the scene. And we couldn't see him. You know. Uh, for the Bible said, blessed is uh, they to say, uh, blessed he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So we couldn't recognize him. We didn't repent and acknowledge him um, as a nation. But a remnant did. A remnant did. Yeah, he said, remember he said, Matthew 15, 24, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then John 1 said, he came into his own and his own received him not. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, to this day, majority of us reject Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. He said, I'm, I'm my soul going to depart from you. He said, I'm going to make thee desolate. That's what it is. Too many of us are desolate in our hearts. That means the Lord is not married to us. He's not abiding in us. Right? We have not made the Lord our habitation. And that's why you jacked up the way you jacked up. I will make thee desolate a land not inhabited. See that? That means you don't have the spirit of God. You don't have the presence of God. You don't have the comfort of God. Therefore, you would go to alcohol. You would go to different types of drugs, medications. See, you trying to uh, heal yourself. You're going to doctors. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She went to all these physicians. And the Bible said she, she didn't get better. She got worse. See, it ain't the physicians that's going to heal you. But then when she acknowledged Jesus Christ, she said, she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made. She was speaking to herself. She encouraged herself in the Lord as David encouraged himself when he was in distress. Right? When his wives and, and, and the wives of his men were kidnapped and they wives and you know, they wives and, and children were kidnapped. And all their goods and possessions was was uh stolen yeah and they and the, and the people thought of stoning david they thought of stoning david david was their leader and the bible said david they cried they cried cried and cried till they had no more tears to cry y'all but then the bible said david encouraged himself in the lord so there might be times when you cry you have to cry you pour yourself out. That's what tears are. You you re actually pouring yourself out. But you got to pour yourself out unto the Lord like David did. David was, the Bible says, a man of integrity. Integrity. He encouraged himself in the Lord. You know, and he inquired of the Lord. Should I go after these Philistines? Blah, blah, blah. And the Lord said, yeah. The Lord said, go after them. The Lord said, you're going to recover all. And David recovered all. His wives, 
the wives of his men, the children, you know, they everything that was stolen from David. David recovered all, man, and then, son, they got the spoils of the enemies. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's going to take faith and trust in the Lord. But here we just read, uh, Jerusalem, the city, says, Be thou instructor, O Jerusalem, at least my soul depart from thee, uh, least I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. And so many of us, that they that reject Jesus Christ, that's what they are. A land uninhabited, man. And then we see that that came to pass in the New Testament. Let's go to Matthew 23. Matthew 23, uh, verse 37. Let's go over there. Matthew 23, 37 says, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem. Here's the prophecy to Jeremiah, yo. That it killeth the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not. That's being comforted. That's being comforted. The Lord wanted to comfort. He came as the comforter. You know, he was in the flesh. You know, he came to comfort his people. And uh, and we rejected him as we about to read. Behold, your house is left unto you. Look, desolate. See that prophecy we just read in Jeremiah? So Jesus is the soul of the Father that we just read in Jeremiah 6 and 8. Jesus is God's soul. That comes to what? Marry us, inhabit us, dwell in us, comfort us, heal us. We read that in Psalms. Heal us from all our diseases and our destruction. Crown of us with loving kindness and tender mercies. The benefits. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, is the benefits that we read in Psalms 103. You know, that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Remember it says in, in uh, Psalms 107 and 20, he sent his word to heal them and to deliver them from their destruction. That's who Jesus Christ is. The word of God that, that came to heal us from our madness, from our crazy. A lot of us crazy. Family members crazy. Children crazy. Husbands crazy. Wives crazy. Am I right about it? <laughs> Am I right about it? All these false preachers and teachers out here. Crazy, man. This whole world is a mental institution. I've done videos on that. Mighty Great Lion done videos on that. This whole world is a mental... I, 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 you know what? I knew that before I was saved. Before I was baptized in Jesus' name. Yeah. I knew this world was a great big mental institution. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. So don't you want refuge from that? From this mental institution? So, psychiatrists got psychiatrists. Y'all know what I mean. Psychiatrists got psychiatrists. No. Who you who gonna help you in this mental institution when they crazy? You got crazy people going to crazy people for help. Doctors need doctors. You you feel what I'm saying? Doctors need medication. You know what I'm saying? A lot of doctors is alcoholics and uh drug addicted. You feel me? So Jesus is the only one that's that's that, that, that's the doctor, true doctor. The only one that can truly make us. What that woman with the issue of blood again? She said, "If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole." That's when you bless. When you can see Jesus, Jesus makes you whole. Jesus makes you complete. Jesus is God's love for you. Jesus is God's comfort. And you can't go over him. You can't go under him. You can't go around him. You understand? You understand? So you got to draw near to him. This is what, what you got to do. What we are commanded to do is come near him. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to finish back to 23. But I'm talking so much and other scriptures are hitting me, man. But uh, let's go to Psalms 73, man. Something I just said. I'm going to do my best to get back there where we was. Um... Uh, 
Matthew 23. Uh, let's go to Psalm 73, 23. It says, Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. That has hold me by my right hand. Right? And Jesus Christ is our right hand. According to scripture. Jesus Christ is our right hand. That's our strength. The right hand represents our strength. Okay? Right? The Lord is our light and our salvation. He's the strength of our life, y'all. Right? Not medication. Not the report of the doctors what they tell you yeah you panicking you looking at that tumor you know what I'm saying you looking at your future some of y'all right now looking at oh man I'm about I done lost my job or I'm about to lose my job you know this inflation is this water is rising we understand that and you panicking you panicking and you magnifying the problems you magnifying this uh uh, mental institution and it's gonna make you uh it's gonna make you make bad moves it's gonna make you panic right it's gonna make you abandon the faith it's gonna make you abandon Jesus Christ you're gonna run looking for other comforts you understand you're gonna run looking for other help other than the help that's subscribed to you the help that's written for you the help that God is given you the help that requires your whole heart your whole faith all your attention all your focus all your mind you understand your hope is in jesus christ right let's finish this out verse 24 thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me the glory now the counsel is the scriptures right living by every word of god matthew 4 4 the scriptures is the comfort and the counsel. That's the scriptures, y'all. The Bible. Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is true. Right? He is a shield unto them that trust in him. He will shield you from death. The scriptures. He will shield you from cancer. He will shield you from high blood. He will shield you from the flesh. Whatever the flesh can throw at you. You understand? The flesh is your enemy. Your flesh is your enemy. That's why it must be crucified, y'all. You must silence the voice of your flesh by taking it to the cross of the black Messiah, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. Let's finish this out, though. There's a whole lot of scriptures I, I, I want to go to. You know, Romans chapter 6, so on and so forth. Let's finish this, though. Whom have I in heaven? Y'all see this? See, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to uh, get the dove's eye. With your eye be single, the whole body's full of light. That's the dove's eye. That's the Song of Solomon. His love is sweeter than wine, man. His love is sweeter than wine. Okay. Whom have I in heaven? But thee. You see that? That's deep. And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. That's a love. That's Song of Solomon. That's Song of Solomon. His, his left hand under my head and his right hand does embrace me. That right hand is drawing you nearer to him, closer to him. That right hand is Jesus Christ, his salvation. His victory for you. Jesus Christ is your victory. You have a victorious life. Already finished, already mapped out, already complete in Christ. Now, some of y'all listening to my voice now, you letting your flesh bring negative words, fighting against the words that I'm saying. And I'm just a witness for Jesus Christ. I'm just a mere voice crying out in the wilderness as a witness of Jesus Christ. That's who I am. Sh silence your flesh by tell it to shut up. Tell that flesh you crucified with Christ. Put on the mind of Christ. That's when you got to fight you. You have to fight you with your what? The spirit that God gave you. The Holy Ghost. I hope y'all got the Holy Ghost. You've been baptized in Jesus' name. Then you should have the Holy Ghost. Or petition the Lord for the Holy Ghost. You can petition him. For the Holy Spirit. My flesh. Look y'all. My flesh and my heart faileth. This is the flesh. That's why you can't trust in you. Because your flesh 
and your heart um, got boundaries, got limits. You limit it. It will fail. Eventually it will fail. The best of us, man. The best of us. Because all flesh is vanity in the eyes of God. No flesh is justified in the eyes of God. Whether you put on fringes, put on the best cologne or best perfume, you can, you can decorate yourself. You can wear a suit and a tie. You can look good to the to others outwardly. But look, your inward, your heart and your flesh faileth. You know, all men are vanity in the eyes of God. All, all have sinned come short of the glory of God. That's your Geno Genus. That's your, all these people you y'all look up to. Ooh, uh, 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 Doctor Umar, all these people that speak well. Your Minister Farrakhan, all these people y'all want to put on the pedals. Right, they are flesh. Flesh was born of flesh is flesh. They are vanity in the eyes of God. There's only one that matters, and you better cleave to this, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He must become your salvation. Acts four twelve. Acts four ten through twelve. Verse ten through twelve. Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you doomed. John three eighteen. Because you believe not. And what? God's salvation for you. You didn't believe in God's love for you. For God so loved the world, he gave you Jesus Christ. And the world is the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, Isaiah 47, 17. 40, excuse me. 45, 17. Let's finish this out. My flesh and my heart fail it. See that? But God is the strength of my heart. That's what's right there, y'all. Boom. Boom by the bang. God which is Jesus Christ. All power in heaven and earth was given to Jesus Christ. Right? There's only one in heaven. No God beside him. Jesus Christ came down from the heavens. And then ascended back up. So he came down to give us this strength right here. He came down to give us his name. His, his name is his strength. Uh, 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 1 Timothy 3, 16 tells us. Greatness, mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in spirit. Right? Uh, preached unto the Gentiles, ju justified in spirit, received up uh, into glory. Right? 1 Timothy 3.16. But God is the strength, when you call on Jesus Christ, of my heart. He's got to be the strength of your heart. This is how you're going to overcome daily. This is your daily victory. You can show forth his salvation from day to day. And that's what he desires you to do, requires you to do. A lot of y'all ain't talking to the Lord. You ain't fellowshipping with him. Daniel prayed three times a day. And that was in ancient days, Babylon. So you should be matching Daniel, at least matching Daniel, or uh do more than Daniel. Now you can pray with you can pray without seas. You can pray while you driving, pray while you doing dishes. Pray while you cutting grass. Huh? Pray while you sitting on the toilet. Pray at all. Pray while you in the shower. You getting this? Laying in the bed. Sitting in that chair. And don't ever say you bored. You hear kids saying that all the time. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm. I say you bored because you ain't, you, ain't, you ain't got Jesus in you holding. You desolate. That's what we just have. We started out. Only desolate people get bored. Only desolate people, let me say it again, get bored. But look what we read. But God, and God, believe me, yeah, yeah, come on. Can I get a witness? We know God is not boring. God is not boring. God is the strength of my heart and my portion. Look at it. Forever. Not temporary. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Saturday. What people call the Saturday day. People be talking about the Sabbath. That was the Sabbath. No, Sabbath day is every day. When you when you sanctified, when you holy as God is holy, when you righteous as God is righteous, when you get the fullness of God through Jesus Christ, that's them temporary people. Temporary people go to church on Sunday. Or Saturday, they got seven-day events. They go on Saturday. 
Then you got these people say that Sabbath day was Friday, sundown, Saturday, Sunday. You know, they, these are temporary people. Fringes wearing people, stuff like that. Temporary people. You can tell these religious folks is temporary people. They part-timers. Part-timers. That's their relationship with what they call God. They don't have no real fellowship with God. We, we just read God is the strength of our heart and our portion forever. This is an eternal God who inhabits the praises of Israel, Psalm 22, 3. This is daily. Show forth my salvation from day to day. True believers don't get bored. The true worshipers who worship God in spirit and in truth. Y'all with me? And we conquer the flesh. Huh? You got to be stronger than infirmity. You got to know you stronger than death. Oh, y'all think I'm tripping? Let's finish this. If you think I'm tripping, hold on with me. I got something for you. Verse 27, for lo, I think we there, right? Yeah. For lo, they that are far from thee, that's what it is. Those temporary folks, temporary relationships, who can't see God right in spirit and the truth. That's what it is. You, they, they, they too far from him. They too far from him. Come on, the Sabbath day is out. If the Sabbath day ain't you, if you ain't the Sabbath day... You temporary. You too far from God. You too far from Him. You think He came all the way this way, laid down His life, shed His blood to give you the temporary? Or did He come to transform your life so your life can be the same as His life? I think the latter is correct. He came to give you His life. His life. Did he say, I come to give you life that you may have it more abundantly? That you would not, what, be desolate. He came to give you his soul, his spirit, his soul, and his body. He came to make you his sanctuary. He came to make you his church. He came to give you the kingdom of God. He came to give you all that he has and all that he is. He left nothing out. He would hold no good thing to them that walk uprightly. We looking for witnesses, man. This video is for the witnesses. We looking for witnesses. We want more than just two and three of us out here now. We need more witnesses that God's word is true. We need more witnesses that God will make you whole and complete. Huh? We need more witnesses. The Lord is looking for witnesses. Isaiah 43, 10, and 11. He come to make you witnesses. Acts chapter 1. That, that whole chapter, really. Acts chapter 1, verse uh, uh, 4 through 10. And verse 22. Acts chapter 1, verse 22. Ordained witnesses. John 15, verse 15 and 16. He come to make you ordained witnesses of his power. Of his glory. Of his fullness. He came to give us his fullness, y'all. You got to put Christ on. Operate in your faith. It's through faith. It's through faith. You hold through faith. Didn't he say your faith make you whole? Over and over and over again in the script. Your faith makes you whole. You not whole. Because you're an unbeliever. It's your unbelief that's uh, holding you back. Holding you back. Your unbelief, your doubts, your fears, that's holding you back. Look what we read now. Psalm 73, 27. For lo, they that, that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go horn from thee. See, y'all, that's what, what the flesh will do. The flesh will go horn after Netflix. The flesh will go horn after the world. The flesh will go horn after this and that for comfort. Now, some people find they comfort in food, eating all day long. They replace the Lord for food. I'm talking about flesh food. Some money, some job, some working, you know, being a busybody. 
They some some people can't stand being alone. You know what I'm saying? They can't stand themselves. Because the flesh ain't crucified. That's all it is. The, the, they need more dealings with Jesus Christ and his cross. Jesus Christ and his word. The word got to go deeper, penetrate deeper into your being. To the uttermost parts of your being. He, he requires truth in your inner man, your inner parts, and your hidden parts. Give you understanding. So you can be transformed inside out. That you can't hinder you. That you can't stop you. You. Remember, you are your worst enemy. It's you. Your flesh. Verse 28. But it is. Let's check this out. Can we get some drum roll and pay attention? Clash. But it is good for me to draw near. Look. To God. We got to draw near him. That's why Jesus came. I had put my trust in the Lord God, or in the name, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the Lord God, that I may declare, look, all thy works. That's what you're supposed to be doing as a witness. Drawing near to him, right? Right? That you will declare all his work, all his finished work. His work is finished. But remember, he said, my soul going to leave you. You're going to be desolate. These are the ones who will not be witness for him. Now, everybody ain't going to be no witness for him. Let's get that 1 Samuel 4, 19. Let's go over there real quick. 1 Samuel 4, 19. And uh, let's start with uh, 18. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell from off the seat. Talking about Eli. Eli was a priest of the Lord. He fell off the seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck break. The breaking of the neck in Scripture means uh, no redemption, no sanctuary. Okay? And he died. For he was old man and heavy. Talking about priest Eli of the Levites. And he had judged Israel 40 years. And his daughter-in-law, Phinehas' wife, his son's wife, was with a child near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, the ark of God represents uh, the presence of God and the strength of God. Right? That the ark of God was taken that her father-in-law and her husband were dead right because his Eli had wicked sons who didn't honor God they were walking crooked and taking bribes and you know, they were sons of the devil the Bible says and it says Eli didn't uh, chastise his sons he didn't he didn't remove them from those priest offices she bowed herself and travailed and her pains came upon her. Okay, she was pregnant with a child. So this is a, um, the child basically really coming before the time. You know. And about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said, Unto her, fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. She brought that, she had a baby boy. And she named the child Ichabod. She called that child Ichabod. Yeah, this was a cursed name. Saying, the glory is departed from Israel. Right? Ichabod, that's what it means. The glory is departed from Israel. Because the ark of God was taken. And because of her father-in-law and her husband. Because they died that same day. Right? Being a curse of God. You know? Um... Uh, and she said, the glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. The ark of God is taken. The glory is departed from Israel had no defense against the enemy. They couldn't stand before the enemy. They had to turn their backs toward the enemy. And this is all because of dishonoring God. Dishonoring the Lord. And again, the Lord said Eli did not uh, chastise his sons. Who were being wicked and sleeping with, you know, fornicating, 
sleeping with you know with the women of Israel so they were spreading sin you know uh, uh, being a wrong example as far as being priest so the Lord warned us over and over and over about these things and this same thing goes to this day the curse and the wrath of God is upon all the disobedient of his people of his children so they are Ichabod Ichabod you could say uh, uh, when the Bible says not all Israel is Israel now the, the true Israel worship in spirit and truth they are the house of King David but the other Israel is Ichabod they got no glory the Lord is departed from them they are desolate they don't have the goodness of all that we, we, we read Psalms 103 the goodness and the mercy and the grace and the love of God and the peace of God see we supposed to come with all of that we supposed to come with that Jesus number four on the menu, the full meal deal, the fullness of God. Oh yeah, we getting it right in this video. We telling you, hey, it's, it's got to be with this video. Don't be coming telling me you got the number two and then they didn't give you your fries. You claiming Jesus, but you don't have no peace. You claiming Jesus, but you ain't got the love of God in you. You, you see what I'm saying? Your meal, your meal is incomplete. The meal that you ordered. Because Jesus definitely is a meal. That's why I say, Matthew 4.4, 4, Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus told us he's the meal in John chapter 6. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. I'm your meal. I'm your full meal deal. I'm your right hand. I'm the what? We just read in John 7. Psalm 73, God is what? The strength of our heart, the strength of our life, right? He's our grace and our glory. Remember that uh, 1 Corinthians 3.11, the head of every man is Christ. So you're supposed to have full meal deal. How come when you talk to these so-called Christians today, they might say Jesus. They might say they they say Jesus, but then the love of God ain't there in them. They desolate. They hollow. They shallow. People saying Jesus, then they say Friday, Saturday is the Sabbath. See, that's outside of Jesus. It, that's outside of Jesus. Friday, Sunday, I'm Saturday, Sunday. That's outside of Jesus. Oh, we go to church Sunday. That's outside of Jesus. That's the world. That's the world. So they tell on themselves. If you listen to what they say, they telling you that they desolate. They telling you that they hypocrites. They telling you that they liars. They telling you that they Satan's children. If you listen to what people are saying, they telling you that they're Ichabod. And that the glory of God is departed from them. They telling you they don't have God's soul. But they're desolate. They're not inhabited by the Holy One of Israel. All right, let's go back to set. Let's go to the Jeremiah 7 real quick. Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7. And really, it's this whole chapter, but we ain't got time. Y'all know we ain't got time. Jeremiah 7, verse 30 says, For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight. Y'all know that's us. This is the tribe Jesus came out of, y'all. So we know this is uh, the tribe Jesus came out of, but he still kept that light on. Let's understand this. He kept that light on for you. So you heathens watching this video, that light never went out from you. Even though we sinned, even though we was wicked, he kept that light on for his children in Judah. Right? And then we got tons of scriptures on that. Tons of scriptures. The mercy will come to Judah. Uh, was that uh, Hosea chapter 1, verse 7? The mercy will come to Judah. Right? He divorced Israel, but the mercy will come to Judah. Right? And from Judah, which Jesus Christ, Hebrews 7 14, came out the tribe of Judah. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight. 
said the Lord. They have set their abominations. And keep that in mind. And we and when you this new covenant, this new testament with Jesus Christ, you gotta get these abominations out your heart. All these idols, because you got idols. Come on. I can ask you right now who's your favorite singer? Stuff like that. You're gonna tell me somebody. Did you know that could be a that's a idol that could be an idol to you? If you saw them today at Walmart, would you want their autograph? That's an idol. If you go for their autograph, would you buy their record? Uh, 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 if you couldn't get it free from YouTube or whatever, would you buy their record today? That's an idol. You look up to this person, uh, you get goosebumps or whatever. If they, if they came knock at your front door, would you be freaking out, trying to call all your friends and neighbors and make videos and all that? If they come knocking at your door, that's your idol. That's your idol. And remember, God is a jealous God. God is a jealous God. Just keep that in mind. Remember, you want the full meal deal. The full, when you say Jesus, you want you get the either you get that full meal deal or you get none of him. Okay? He is a jealous God. Alright? Look at Roman Catholic. Y'all see my out my videos uh that I put up uh yesterday, a couple of days ago. I'm downtown and these Roman Catholics, it's called the beasts. The rising of the beast. Now that's what they do. They worship idols. The Roman Catholic Church is, come on, that's what they do. They worship idols. And they was passing out these little buttons with Mary. It's supposed to be a, 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 a symbols of Mary. The, what they call the Mother Mary. That's worship. They pass out all these flyers and symbols. And, and the Pope carries around that cross. And he has that head of Dagon on his head. The Roman Catholic Church, they worship what they call the saints, the saints, and they have images of the saints from Mary to Paul, and they were wearing shirts of Paul, and they say that Peter's the first pope, and they're idol worshippers. And remember, God's a jealous God, so they, that which their whole foundation is 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 blasphemous. Their whole foundation, Roman Catholic Church, is blasphemous, and I tore all of that down. I shut out. I hope y'all saw the video. So I just want to say, God's a jealous God anyway, and they promoting Paul and Peter and everything else but Jesus Christ, the Black Messiah. We show this phony baloney, man, phony baloney. And when you got Jesus Christ, see, you able to break these truths down because you got the full meal deal. Talking about Peter was the first rock, and the church is built upon Peter. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible don't exalt Peter as no pope. Jesus Christ is the, the only foundation, the true foundation. Uh, um, Isaiah 28, 16. I lay in Zion a, for a foundation, a cornerstone, a chief cornerstone, an everlasting foundation that shall not be removed. Come on. Jesus Christ is the throne. He's the rock. And I told them Psalms 18, 31. Who is God save our rock? Who's, who's the Lord save our God? You know what I'm saying? That's Jesus Christ. He's the rock. Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church. My church. My church. Not Peter's church. My church. Not the Roman Catholic church. My church. It's in his name. Anyway, Jeremiah 7, verse 30. It says, for the children of Judah, right, have done evil in my sight, said the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my Name. Jerusalem is called by the Lord's name. He put his name on it. We see that in uh, Revelations 3.12. Revelations 3.12. And the children of Israel, he put his name on the children of Israel, which is his church, which is his city, which is his kingdom. Right? The children of Israel. That's Numbers 6.27. Okay, that also goes with 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. If my people which are called by my name... All right, we the same city. We the same Jerusalem and the city, okay? We all of that in one. That's the full meal deal. Remember that fullness of God, that full meal deal, that Jesus. When you say Jesus, you get full meal. Take the full meal, you get nothing at all. That also means he's a jealous God. So you can't be worshiping Mother Mary. You can't be worshiping the saints. You can't be worshiping angels. You get this. Can't be worshiping the Pope. Can't be worshiping... What Jesus say uh, when he was fighting the devil? Uh, um, thou shalt 
serve the Lord God, thy God and him only shalt thou worship. Huh? When Jesus was fighting the devil, he said, It is written, Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. Now, you want your healing, right? You want your deliverance, right? You want your breakthroughs, right? You have it right here in this video. Don't wait for another video. You got to name it and claim it right here in this video. Right now. Let this video be your transformation. Let this be the day.